Welcome back to the channel. I recently revealed a yard renovation project that I've been working on for actually it's the last few years at this point. I just haven't posted any of the videos. Now the first summer I did that, I listed the fill dirt in my backyard for free and I said, you know, it's free, but you just gotta come pick it up. And unsurprisingly, nobody actually showed up to get it despite all the interest I had because let's be real, people are lazy and they don't want to do physical labor. So what I decided to do at the end of that summer and going into summer two, of this project was to bring it to the people by that I mean buy this used trailer for a total of $250 so that I could just deliver the rocks the gravel and the dirt to whoever wanted them and or to the dump the goal here is I would deliver it locally I could charge like 10 or 20 bucks per trailer load it's still cheaper than what people would be able to buy the dirt for otherwise and in return I'd recoup my gas cost and eventually earn enough to pay off this trailer now this is just a used harbor freight trailer and if you get one of the super coupons you can buy a brand new one of these for about four hundred dollars but i didn't want to buy a new one for two reasons the first being i'm gonna beat the crap out of this thing anyway hauling gravel and dirt and rocks there's no point buying a nice one when i'm just gonna trash it second is not only did i get the trailer for 250 dollars i also got an led light kit i got two spare wheels with tires i got a trailer dolly i got a bunch of accessories and stuff that came with this included with that price so it's like an extra 200 dollars of stuff that i got with it and even if I bought the brand new one, I would still have to go through the process of putting on all the decking and stuff and outfitting it to be what I wanted it to be. So I said, you know what? Monetarily just makes more sense to buy one that's already depreciated and then to put the same amount of labor in it to still make it what I want to be and have it be no worse off after I'm done using it. So with that said, today's project is going to be getting this thing up to snuff, making sure the lights work and that it's at least semi-street legal, and then outfitting it so that I don't break my spine every time I'm loading and unloading dirt from this thing. So with that said, let's get to it. The very first thing to try out with this project was to see whether or not any of the taillights worked. Now, unsurprisingly, on a $250 trailer, yeah, they didn't work. That's probably why it came with a new light kit, right? So this thing was wired incorrectly front to back, top to bottom, and it's a lot more difficult to troubleshoot somebody else's wiring than it is to just rewire it properly yourself sometimes. So I looked at it, and there was a lot of loose connections or poorly made connections. There's a couple things that were very corroded. And then the ground wasn't actually really grounded. The place that it was attached to the frame was completely covered with paint, so there was actually no connection to the metal. Now, I used a grinder to remove some of that paint, and one of the lights started working intermittently, which means that that was part of the issue, but that everything else was still broken, and I had to redo this from square one. Just like everything else I repair on this channel, how do I do it? It's easy. You take off the broken stuff, and then you put on the new working stuff. So I started by stripping off everything everything the prior owner had on there, both the toolbox, the little pieces of decking that remain, and these PVC pipes that look like they were used to mount tires. Getting these all out of the way made it a lot easier to get to the wires below it, and then I just took them all out and detached the current lights because, hey, they're not working, not worth troubleshooting these when I have a brand new in-the-box set that definitely works. Now, if you're looking for the nitty-gritty on how to wire a trailer, quite frankly, I'm not going to cover it because I've got three years of viewership history that tells me you guys don't care about those videos. Now Google is your friend if you're looking to do that, that's how I figured it out, and using the wiring diagrams and stuff on Google, this is the first time I ever wired a trailer, I was done within an hour. But once I finished, I figured out that the four pin harness that came with this trailer lighting did not line up properly with the four pin harness that was on the battle wagon. So fortunately I was able to buy another one that is a plug and play unit that goes into an OEM plug on Subarus and that was relatively inexpensive, so the battle wagon was up and running in no time with this thing. And because every now and then I get lucky and absolutely nothing to do with my quality of workmanship, the lights worked flawlessly on the first time. So with this thing in street legal trim and officially registered for the road, I was able to take it to the store and buy some decking for the next part of the project. And by decking, I literally just mean some plywood and some sideboards. Quick caveat is that when I was taking this decking back home, I realized that it wasn't sitting perfectly flat on the top of the trailer. 
trailer. And the reason is there's a bunch of bolt heads that protrude through the top of the trailer that interfere with how this thing lays. Now you got two options here. The first is that you just notch the deck so that you cut out a hole around so you have clearance for each of those bolts. Or number two, you change the arrangement of your trailer slightly where you use flat head bolts in those areas or have the bolts go through the deck and the frame of the trailer, which means you need to buy longer bolts. I went with the notching method because quite frankly, I'm lazy, it's easier, I didn't want to disassemble this, I didn't have extra bolts, and I did have a saw. But if you're in a situation where the trailer is not already assembled, or you're just assembling it for the first time, it is no more difficult to put the longer bolts in. The other area where I had clearance issues between the top of this thing and the decking was in the middle by these hinges. Now why are there hinges in the middle of the trailer? Good question, it is supposed to fold in half for storage. Needless to say, the previous owner didn't set it up properly, so it didn't do that. But regardless, these hinges were still in the way, so I had to cut around those as well. As I'm getting this thing notched around the edges, you'll notice on the left side on the ground, there is a truck bed unloader. That is my back saver. But it is a truck bed unloader, keyword, and not a trailer unloader, so I figured out really quickly I was going to have to do some modifications. So we'll have to come back to that in a bit. In the meantime, I took out my table saw, went to my backyard, and started ripping down the other piece of plywood to make the side rail so that, you know, the dirt didn't go flying over the sides and into everyone else's cars because I tried to not be an a hole at all times. Only most of the times. Most of the time is okay, all the time is not. I also cut down some 2x4s to support that, and I bought a number of brackets that you'll see in a minute that are pretty much explicitly to hold up posts on the outside of a trailer, and the trailer already had pre-drilled holes in it specifically for those brackets because, let's be real, they know what you're going to be using this for. Going back around to the driveway, I pre-drilled holes for all the places that I was going to attach this deck to the frame because, let's be real, I'm putting a lot of weight on it. I don't want those to split. And then I attached this with bolts to the frame and I used fender washers. Now fender washers are the comically large washer that has like a quarter inch hole in the middle and it's like a two inch wide washer total. I used as many of these as I could possibly fit because I was paranoid about this breaking knowing that I was probably going to overload the crap out of this thing. But I did that, then I started attaching those brackets on the outside edge using the same technique for those two by fours. You'll notice I have the trailer dolly that I got with this thing in the front, keeping it still. And clearly this was before I crashed my Viper because it was still in the garage, RIP in peace. And now that I have to look at it in the background of the videos, knowing that it's totaled, I get to die a little bit more inside every time that I get reminded. One more thing that was set up wrong on this trailer is the folding wheel that goes in the front is supposed to go closer to the tongue. They had it at the front of the box frame, and then they had it reinforced with this really, really thin piece of maybe eighth inch thick steel. So not only was that probably not going to sustain the weight that I was going to expose it to, that was also in a location that it was blocking you from putting any sort of wall there because there's no way you could possibly raise or lower that wheel if you put a side rail above that thing. So again, whoever did this previously, total hack job. But with that out of the way and with all the brackets around the perimeter of this thing, I was able to put the 2x4s in as our fence posts and then put the outer walls made out of plywood. And I know that these are a little bit flimsy, but we're not going to be heavily loading anything off of those. It's literally just to keep the dirt from blowing out. And I secure these things with like three inch L brackets, both to the other walls around it and to the plywood floor, just to make sure that these things were extra stable and that we weren't going to have any problems. Now going back to the truck bed unloader, that is designed to sit on top of a tailgate, which obviously has a curve to it, but it's also a different thickness and a different width than the end of the trailer. So if I were to just slap that on the end of the trailer, it would cover up both of my brake lights on both sides, which is not exactly an ideal scenario and questionably legal. This is the part where the creative engineer in me got to come out and just completely make it a hack job of my own, but at least a hack job that functioned properly and wasn't a complete death trap. Now I figured out that a 4x4 post was roughly the thickness of a tailgate and fit perfectly into these clamps on the end of the tailgate unloader. Now I couldn't clamp this thing directly onto the rear end of the trailer, it was going to interfere with the tail tailgate, it was going to let dirt out, and it wasn't going to be secure. But if I put this 4x4 as like a rear bumper into the trailer, that would give this thing both the correct thickness to grab onto, it would give it enough depth to grab onto. Then I could hold it to the trailer frame with this massive lag bolt so that when I was unwinding it to clear everything off, it wasn't going to move, it was going to stay secure, and it was going to continually function over time, which as you can tell is kind of what I was going for here. So a couple lag bolts, a couple fender washers, and a couple pre-drilled holes later, 
we had this thing on and ready to go and while on one hand it looked a little bit sketchy it worked it worked well and it worked for the last two to three years and in fact it's still on there now in the same form unmodified but also as expected this completely blocked the taillights which again was questionably legal so really quick relocated the taillights a little bit higher up a little bit limited by the length of the wires that came in the kit but was still able to at least get them in the visible zone so that I'm not a complete target for getting pulled over even though the battle wagon isn't necessarily the most discreet vehicle to begin with now this is before I bought the Cayenne so I didn't have anything else to tow yet that should give you an idea of how far back this project was but I generally make it a point to try to not get pulled over at this point you might be thinking hey but you said you didn't want the dirt to fly everywhere what about the fact that you have no rear tailgate well my friends I have thought of that as well so I've got these like slotted angle iron bits I put those on the back and then I just have a drop-in piece of plywood with these like latching type cotter pins that go through the top of that angle iron and then those block the plywood from coming out the top and then I have a removable tailgate so that I can just roll things on and off then put that there so it doesn't go flying out while I'm driving but this way I can pull that off take a wheelbarrow with a ramp and get everything up onto there and just dump it on there super easy and I don't have the tailgate constantly in the way so basically I over engineered and oversimplified everything as much as I possibly could as is characteristic for somebody with an engineering background and with these final pieces assembled this trailer was ready for a test drive now the only thing that was still kind of questionable on this was the visibility of the license plate and the fact that it was held on by zip ties but I was only going down one or two exits on the highway so barely getting up to speed and getting right off the exit ramp again I was pretty much going across town to the dump for my first trip with this thing so I figured why not load it up with 1100 pounds of concrete that is right this load here weighed in at 1100 pounds now I gotta say when I made the trip it handled it very well I was actually worried about the Forester handling that much weight because the Forester is only like 175 horsepower and that was when it left the factory 165 or 170 thousand miles prior to this video being shot but the clutch didn't blow up everything held together nothing started catching fire if you're like me and you're used to driving boxes, I count that as a win. Here's what wasn't a win though, is that when I was on my way home and I was just starting to get up to highway speeds, I saw in my side view mirror that my trailer license plate was flapping around in the breeze on its last zip tie. So here's some footage shot after that trip was made and you'll notice that one of the zip ties is doubled up and the other one is a different color. Now fortunately, I had some spares in the back of the car, but I had to pull over on the side of the highway and then try to re-merge on a busy highway with the world's slowest freaking car of all time with a trailer on the back. So I decided that between the sketchiness of that and the fact that it wasn't extremely visible and that I didn't really want to get pulled over for something so stupid, that we were due for some final adjustments before closing this project out. And I was trying to think of what's a good, easy place to mount this that's also super visible from the back. And then I realized I've got a big, flat surface that's easy to screw into that's known as the rear tailgate. Phenomenal! I just saved myself another problem by using the laziest solution possible earlier. So a few quick screws later, this thing was flat mounted on the rear of this trailer, super secure, no risk of blowing off, and with that, we can officially call the trailer renovation complete. With that said, this is clearly a utility trailer, it's not going to win any beauty contests, but the grand total I had to get a functioning utility trailer, including the registration fees, the lumber, the hardware, the brackets, everything, was, I believe, a grand total of $407, which means my entire build was literally dollars more than the price of buying a new one that would have been pretty much just a frame with some wheels. So if you're wondering why I cheaped out on the trailer, yeah, well I told you I was a broke boy, so here's your proof. But this was my only avenue to actually try to get the yard project done, otherwise I had no desire to spend any time or money on a trailer like this. But that's gonna do it for this time, guys. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.